It's Johnny! I'm back, folks. I was sick over the weekend, not feeling good, coughing fits. I couldn't do any videos. Haven't done a video since last Thursday, my live streaming event, and that seems like a long time ago to me now. But I feel much better now, and I'm ready to go. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and today it's Tuesday, October 8th. So you know what I like to do on this show, right? I like to share a hot penny stock with you that I found through the day as I was trading penny stocks. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on every market. So if you don't want to play the penny stocks on the OTC, don't worry about it. There are lots and lots of them on the major exchanges. Matter of fact, I've been playing a lot of penny stocks on the major exchange over in my Penny Boys group. We've got a Discord group that I am in from 9.30 to 4 o'clock. That's bell to bell. And I get no breaks, folks. I am there nonstop trading with anybody that comes in, including you. Absolutely free. Come on in. There's a link down below. It says, this is the Penny Boys link. Kind of tough to miss. Click that. It'll take you into the Discord group. Now, if you haven't had Discord before, you're going to have to choose a username, a password, and give them your email. After that, they'll toss you into our Penny Boys group. Look for the free member page on the left-hand side. Jump in there. Stock Wizard. Big green letters for my name. I'm in there trading with anybody and everybody. We're looking for hot stocks, and we're taking probable moves, what people call scalps. We're getting into plays for 10, 15 minutes at the most, and we're taking moves from one support and resistance to the next. And we're getting $100, $150, $200 on each play. Limiting our risk because we're not in these stocks very long. Taking probable moves. The stock is running, running, running. Don't worry about the ceiling. Take what is given. We'll come back for seconds later. You don't have to put it all on your plate right now. It's not how much you take. It's how often you take it. The more wins you get, you're going to be accumulating money. And you know what else? The more wins you get, the better you feel. So a lot of short trades that are wins, 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 that give you money, give you money, give you money, that piles up, and so does your self-confidence, folks. Well, today we were playing a lot of penny stocks over there on Penny Boys, and two of them, two of them that gave us a lot of gains today were Lace, ticker L-A-S-E, and Buru, ticker B-U-R-U. Now, both of these companies coincidentally are working with lasers. Lays works with lasers to clean rust and paint off of metal, and this company works with blue lasers for welding specialty metals together. Now, I liked Buru because of her chart. That's why I share most of these stocks with you. They've got the righteous charts I'm looking for. She had an atypical breakout, and I shouldn't say had. It was had. I found this at around noon. She was running earlier, but I found her at noon. She had an atypical breakout on the four-hour chart. That's when you got that 200-day SMA coming down, price up underneath it. 200 turns up, gets its weight off of the price so it can turn up, and it cuts through that 200, and boy, she runs. It's like a dog out of its pen. Well, I saw that setup, and I said, there's a stock I'm going to share. That was like noon. Two o'clock, I looked at it. Still looking good. Started doing my DD, getting my pages set up. Looked at it about an hour later. It was like, oh my God. But we had been playing it in Penny Boys. And I knew what was going on. She was running. She was running hard. As you can see, she finished the day at $1.01. But she was up 125% today, folks. Yeah. Now, usually I would consider that a rocket stock. Meaning she went up so fast, she's going to run out of fuel. She's going to get too far away from her MAs and come down crashing. And that's not going to be helping anybody. But that's not what's going on here. She took big gains to get to the 200. Broke out over the 200. Came back down. And right now she is sitting on top of the 200 at a dollar one. That's exactly where it's at. So she is primed for the breakout on the charts. And we've got catalysts over here. So that's why we're looking at it. So Buru, New Buru Inc. finished today at $1.01 with almost 126% gains, up 56 cents today. She is on the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange, lots of penny stocks on the major stock exchange, and you got to appreciate them more than the OTC for a lot of reasons. One, you don't have to pay for any of your transactions on the major exchanges. All of your transactions are free. You get to trade pre-market, after-market. 
huge gains to be taken in those periods of time, folks. You need to pay attention to them. Even if you can't be there, you can put trades in there. You can have standing trades. Well, sure, you can trade aftermarket, pre-market. You don't need any permission or special training. Just get in there and trade. But remember, you got to change that period of your trade. It's not a day trade. And that's what's in there by default. If you don't change that, it's not even going to see your order until the bell goes off. So if it doesn't work, it means you forgot to change that to extended hours, pre-market, whatever your broker says. If it doesn't work, cancel that order because as soon as the bell goes off, that's a live order that could pop at any moment. And what else is there? That's right. We got more money. More volume on the major exchange by a long shot. I am talking a long shot, folks. Here on the OTC, let's refresh this. The OTC's volume today was 2.1 billion shares. That was for 12,294 stocks. I guarantee you, folks, a lot of companies did not get any shares moved today. You get 10, 20, 30 times that much volume up on the major exchange by a long, long shot. So what does this company do? Well, I told you they work with lasers, but let's get a little more information. Nubaru engages in high power, high brightness, blue laser technology business for welding and 3D printing industries worldwide. The company offers two different products. Its products have applications in batteries, e-mobility, consumer electronics, and 3D printing metal systems. So jumping on over here to their website, Nubaru Net, they tell us they can weld the most challenging materials, copper, aluminum, silver, nickel, and different metals together. Now, I'm not a welder, but my nephew is, and I've seen it through the years, absolutely. And I got to tell you, it's a very specific science. So when you can start welding things together that normally don't connect, that's a good thing. So they tell us down here they do work in a lot of different industries, all high-tech industries. Blue light interacts with copper, aluminum, silver, nickel, and other metals more efficiently than other lasers, enabling higher production yields with a simpler process. Nubaru's blue lasers uniquely deliver KW class power with Galval scanner compatibility, enabling high speed welding with large process window and micron scale depth control using their two devices right there. And I can't tell you a whole lot about the devices, but if you want more information, just jump on over here to newbaru.net to get it. So let's take a look at the news and see what's going on. I am going to start back here at the reverse stock split they did pretty much at the end of July. It was a 1 for 40 reverse stock split. That has now brought our outstanding share count under 4 million, which means we've got a very low float is excellent. Next piece of news tells us that the company announces a strategic marketing partnership with NextGen AI Solutions Group. Newbrew's state-of-the-art blue laser technology has been at the forefront of innovation, offering unmatched performance in the applications ranging from industrial manufacturing to medical devices. With the increase in demand for efficient and effective marketing strategies, Newbrew has enlisted NextGen AI Solutions Group to further advance its marketing presence in key markets. They're going to sell the dog out of these things if they possibly can. Then they tell us at the beginning of August, re-imaging sustainability. Lasers for Net Zero and Newbrew lead innovation in industrial laser technology. I have not dove into that. I'm going to let you do that. Newbrew partners with CDME at Ohio State University to showcase the unique advantages of blue wavelength lasers and additive manufacturing. Again, I have not dove into this. We can't get into everything, but you see they're doing a lot of things. They're working with a lot of different groups and organizations. And whenever I see other companies and organizations working with the company, making deals with them, partnering with them, that reassures me this isn't a scam operation. They got a legitimate business. They're not going to waste their time involving themselves with a bad business. And then the piece of news, which has probably got this thing running, came out actually on the 7th. Though they brought it back out today, Nubaru secures strategic $65 million funding program to accelerate commercialization, including $15 million pipe investment and a $50 million equity line of credit. 
and we could go read it, but that's really it. That's when you boil it all down, folks, that's it. So they've got money that they can use when they need it. And right now they've just hired a company to help commercialize their products. They need money to get that going. They've got the money now. And that's what everybody is excited about. And that's why the stock is running right now. Now, since I see it, I'll mention it. B-U-R-U-W. She has a warrant. You should always consider looking to see if the company you're investing in has a warrant. Now, I want to see how well this did. Normally, when a stock does good, the warrant does better. Well, it didn't do better, but it didn't do bad. Now, did it? You can see the price. We're down here at just over a penny. And that doubled. It's 100%. She was at 005, which is really, really too low for a warrant. I don't think warrants can go under a penny without being in hot water. So this was in hot water. She's out of hot water now. I think I'm going to watch this warrant tomorrow, folks. Warrants can move. Now think about this. All this has to do is go to two cents and it's doubled again. Two cents is 100% gains. Warrants like to move hard and fast. And normally there's a big gap between the ask and the bid. I mean, seriously, it may be two cents is the bid and the ask will be 10 cents. That's a 500% difference. And you think, ain't nobody going to buy that. Yes, they do. Boom! It'll go from two cents up to 10 cents just like that. But don't be in a hurry to sell. Check the ask and the bid. Chances are your bid didn't move yet. It still says two cents. Even though the price is 10 cents, the bid is still two cents. You got to get one or two more bids somewhere in between or up there at 10. And then it's going to flux. And then you're going to have two, three, four hundred percent of gains sitting there on the table. You need to watch warrants when the stock is hot. And this one is at a beautiful price. A penny? Man, she can get fast gains. Go to a nickel. That's 500 percent gains on this. Now, I'll tell you right now, I normally don't put more than $50 or $100 on these because you can get stuck holding them if things go wrong. You have to wait for volume and liquidity, but you got to get in quick and get out quick. Take your gains like anything else. All right, back to what we were looking at. Buru, I told you she has a warrant. You're going to watch that too now. We've gone through the news. Let's go see what sort of volume she had today. Oh, man. Look at that. What is that? A hundred times? I think it might be. It can't be 10. Nope. That's two zeros over. A hundred times her normal volume going from 1.3 million to 113 million. Wow. What an explosion there, folks. How many shares they got? Well, I told you they got less than 4 million, barely over 3 million. Now think about that. Let's go back to that. There are about 3.2 million and they sold 113 million shares, but they've only got 3.2 million. How do you sell 113 million if they've only got 3 million? You got to sell them again and again and again, all in the same day, which means there's a supply and demand issue like they're going to have down in Florida after this hurricane. There's not going to be enough plywood to go around. Probably isn't enough right now. And the prices start going up because there's just not enough to go around. And that's what happens here. People start holding their stock, seeing people who want to buy it. And they say, no, nah, I'm going to wait. And they just keep pushing that price up until it takes off and runs. This is amazing, folks. We have another day like this tomorrow with this sort of volume. We could see some very strong runs. Let's see what we have for financials. I haven't looked at this. This will be the first time. I didn't have a lot of time today. I was doing a lot of trading. Back in 2021, they weren't making anything. 2022, we had $1.4 million. I know it's millions because they tell me up here I got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. They were losing money though. They made 1.4 and lost 3.4. Yikes. Kicked that up to 2 million in 2023. And they also kicked up their losses. They're up to 3.6. So this isn't real exciting. Let's take a look at their quarterlies. Wow. Look here, folks. Their revenues are dropping hard and fast. And their, well, their losses are dropping hard too because they're not making as much money. But still, $49,000 is all they made. And they lost over a half a million trying to make that. 
Now, I'm not quite sure what the problem was, but obviously the company that just came in and is giving them three different sorts of money. They have money to spend now. They have money that's being invested, uh, I do believe, uh, the pipe. And they also have money that is available as credit to them. So they've got access to monies. The company giving that money must understand that the problem was cash flow. And now the cash flows come in, this should turn around. Take a look at that balance sheet. Got about 117,000 in the bank. 8.3 million in assets. I total liabilities. 19.3 million. Darn it. So stockholder equity is down there. 11 million. We don't call it stockholder equity. It's stockholder deficit. We are holding deficit for this company. So their revenues have dropped. Their profit margin is nil and they've got deficit. But you know what? As a day trader, we aren't really worried about this. These stocks I'm trading through the day, I never look at the fundamentals. I never, hardly ever look at the news unless somebody asks. I never look at management. I don't care. I am playing the chart. Lots of people never know why the chart is moving one way or the other. And you know, it doesn't matter. We've all seen good news in a stock fall. We've all seen bad news in a stock run. So it doesn't matter about the news. Don't focus on the news. Focus on the charts. Get used to reading the heat in the chart. It's a lot more defining and accurate compared to the heat in news. That is very, very subjective. Take a look at our disclosures now. We got an 8K. I'm sure this is about the money. 8Ks are any financial change, not financial, material changes to the company. Entry into material definitive agreement. This is what I look for here first. The big bold plaque print to see if it says anything I'm interested in. If not, I'm out of here. Well, this is something. What do we got here? New Brew entered into a master transaction terms agreement with Liquis LP. Okay. For, let's see what we got here. Established a strategic financing framework for short term and long term financing for the company. The master agreement provides for immediate capital infusion from the investors of $3 million. That's immediate. And then subsequent weekly capital infusions of $1.2 million. Oh, isn't that nice? $1.2 million coming to them every week at market price until an additional 10 million has been invested. The acquisition and conversion of certain outstanding notes with each $1 debt converted into $2 of common stock at market price. Oh, that's great. Debt conversion. Every $1 of debt, which they would have to pay a dollar to get out of debt, is now being turned into $2 worth of investment. That's a great deal, folks. Things are flipping here for the company. I'm liking what I'm reading here. And then, of course, they got that $50 million equity line of credit. This is what they needed, obviously. And that's why everybody is excited. The company was just struggling because they had no cash flow. They were dying of thirst. And if they didn't get help, it could have been really, really bad for them. Now, we are on the major exchange, right? We're at a dollar. There is a minimum bid price requirement on the major exchange of a dollar. You go under a dollar for too long, you can be kicked off the major exchange down to the OTC. Now, they do give you six months to fix that problem once they tell you about it. I haven't seen anything. I didn't go doing a deep dive, but right now we're at a dollar and I think we're at a breakout point. So I'm really not concerned about that. And again, because we're day traders, we're only in this stock for a little while. And more to the point, you should be getting out of these stocks before they come down. Honestly, folks, get your supports and resistances in there. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just come into my free members group tomorrow and just see. I grab charts and I put supports and resistances in. These are points on the chart where the price bounces, where it changes direction, whether up or down. If it hits the $3 and bounces up or it hits the $3 and bounces down, we draw a line on $3 because it seems to want to change direction there over and over again. And when you get these lines, they're like traffic lights. You get in front of a traffic light, you slow down. You get past the traffic light, you speed up to the next one. And normally there's nothing in between the two traffic lights to slow you down. That's called a probable move. And that's what we trade. We will get into a trade just over a support and get out, out of the next one. But if it looks really strong, 
sell half. Don't just take everything with you. Don't do that. Sell half and let the other half ride or sell 75% better yet and let the rest ride. You can always come back for seconds, folks. Honestly, don't try to put everything on your plate at one time. It, this is how people go broke. They risk more than they need to. Take the gains as they're given. So we got a lot going on here, especially the chart, which is, thank God, put itself back into the breakout position. I thought I was going to have to tell you, well, now we're going to watch it come back down and bounce off the 200, which it probably will, but we're waiting for the breakout now. Let's go take a look at that chart. All righty then. Let's do some charting on my free trading platform, my playground. This is Think or Swim. We are taking a look at Nuburu Inc, ticker B-U-R-U, -U, on a one-day, one-year chart. As you can see, she's coming out of a real strong downtrend here. We had a piercing through the 200, but that was all we got. But it gave us our 52-week high of $15.60 back in May of this year. And just at the end of September, we hit a low of $0.38. Cents falling from $15.60 and right now we are just at a buck. Now we got a lot of lines here. You really can't see what's going on. So I'm going to jump down to our six month, four hour view. Well, that doesn't help, does it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily remove these lines so we can see our chart. I do need those lines because I can't do my trading without those supports and resistances, but we're looking at the chart. I'll put them back here in a minute. So we were going sideways here. And look at these luscious jumps. That's a 50% jump. That's a 50% jump. That's a 100% jump. That's a 300% jump. And so is this one. We've got some huge jumps going on here. Then we had a big drop, came back up to our 200, but could not get through it, fell back down. And right now, she is trying to work on a breakout. She was underneath every single MA here. You can see that. She's under the nine. You can't climb until you're on top of the nine. That's the first step in the staircase. So she's going sideways, really not climbing, but she's making headway. She is crossing all of the MAs here except the 200. Every single MA until she is over or on all of them right here. She's on top of her 50, getting a little excited that the 200 made a move down. Hey, it's coming closer to me. She dipped a little bit down towards our 200 haul, which is now blue, ready to help the price push. Whenever you see the price in between this blue haul, that's the 200 haul, and the 200 MA, normally you're going to see the price climb up to and through that 200, which is exactly what we got going on right now. And look at that volume today, folks. Compared to the volume on the days before, this is incredible volume. Our oscillators look good. PPO is climbing. Our MACD is climbing. Tough to see there. Let's see if I can zoom in on that for you. There you go. You can see she's climbing with some big green bars coming into the picture. And our RSI is in the overbought right now. Clear up at 74. I like overbought. Don't let anybody talk you into not getting into a stock when it's overbought. If you're going for a swing trade, you don't want to buy in the overbought. You want to get it down at the oversold. But if you are getting a scalp, you want a stock that's moving right now. You don't want zero miles per hour. You want 60 miles per hour. You want to jump into a moving vehicle if you possibly can. So this is looking very sweet across the board on the four hour chart. Now I'm going to put these lines back in the picture because they make a lot of sense on our shorter charts, which is where I really read them. I set these up for my one minute and five minute charts, but I got to get a lot of those lines way back six months or a year ago, sometimes even three years ago. So we've got a trend change coming here, folks, right? Our 200 is falling hard and furious right here. She goes flat. When did we have a burst of enthusiasm? As soon as that 200 went flat. This is when opportunity presents itself. In most cases, you will not see the stock break out over the 200 when it's falling. It'll push through it, but it'll come right back down. It's not going to stay up there and start climbing. Not till it gets level and flat, then it'll start to run. And that's what we got here. Our 200 went flat. Right now, she is starting to climb. She had a nice high here 
came down underneath the 200 for a crouch like a cat. If a cat wants to go higher than it is, it has to crouch. We got to bend our knees and go lower if we're going to jump higher. That was a big jump from that crouch, folks. That was a crouch and a half, throwing us over that 200, still getting some aftermarket activity here. We'll get a better look at that when we zoom in on the smaller time frames. But as you can see, she's riding her nine day MA up. She isn't touching the 20, the 50, or anything else. So we've got a very light price floating right now on a cracker thin MA. Our last bar, it's right in the middle of this down bar, which only came down to our nine day, and she is bouncing off of it. This is a beautiful chart right now. All of our osculators are a little cool, but they're definitely not falling. They're just kind of taking a rest right now. Take a look at our 15 minute, five day. So she was under the 200 here, burst through there, had another break here. See all of these jumps, pre-market, after-market. We get some bounces during the day, but come on, folks, we get some nice big bounces here, after-market and pre-market. Here we had a nice bounce, after-market yesterday, pre-market at 4 in the morning. She jumped from $0.60 cents up to $0.84, cents, came back down to our dual MAs here, the 50 and the 200. Wow. Put the two of those together. That is some serious support, folks. You can bounce off of that. And it did. Boink. Bounced right off of that and climbed from 61 cents up to $1.20. $1.20. Came down, hit our nine day, bounced up again to $1.27, hitting this support up here, way up there and coming all the way back down to this support and resistance of 89. You see how it tags them and bounces on top of them? This is why we like our supports and resistances. It gives us an idea of what the stock is gonna do, where it may stop, where it may bounce, where it's gonna slow down. When you can predict the stock's movement, you're ahead of the game. When you can catch momentum and predict the movement of the stock, you are in the money. Get in, get out, take those gains. All of our MAs are climbing right now, except that nine day. No, actually it is too. It has just turned around, hasn't it? Look at that. Came down to our 20, bounced off of that one, two, three, four green bars, crossing the nine day right now. This is looking excellent. Osculators, got a little cool, but everything is warming back up right now. Folks, I'm liking Buru for the breakout tomorrow. I'm gonna get rid of all these lines so that you can see what this looks like again. Get rid of them for them, please. All right, folks, that's what we're looking at. To me, this is a perfect setup. 200 haul on the bottom, just as strong as that 200 day MA. The difference between the two here, this 200 MA don't give a care about the price, never thinks about it. The 200 haul takes into consideration the current price it considers the price. So you've got a relationship here. And whenever the price is in between the two 200s, this bottom one, the haul, likes to push the price to and through the 200. And I think we're going to see it tomorrow, folks. I think this is going to break out. The chart looks luscious to me. I'd be putting BURU on my chart, on my watch list. It is on my charts. I was thinking about telling you to go do some more due diligence, which never hurts. But folks, if this starts to run tomorrow, take your gains. Your gains are going to be, can, can I still get them? Your gains are going to be between these lines. Let's see if I can tell you where you should probably get in and out here. Okay. This is what I would do over at Penny Boys. So we're bouncing down here on 90 cents. Right now she is at a dollar on top of the 200 on the four hour chart. So she's in a good place. So I would say, wow, Right now isn't actually a bad time to get in. It's a little higher than I like to go, but I think she's going to push up. So we would get in at about 97, or if you want to wait until she gets above this one, we would get in at about a buck 11, and we would get out at a dollar 26. We just take that small gain. For every thousand shares you buy of a stock, regardless of the price, every penny it moves is ten dollars profit so if you could buy a thousand shares here that cost you a thousand dollars and you moved from uh 94 cents well no up here let's go from uh a buck a buck eight up to a buck 28 
that would give you 20 cents at ten dollars a penny that's a two hundred dollar play right there for a thousand shares and that's what we do every day at penny boys we find ways to get into stocks and get out of stocks on momentum probable moves grab that small gain you think that's a small gain well what if you get three of those in a day or four wow now maybe you did lose some money 20 or 30 bucks because you limit your loss so you've got a 200 180 and 150 dollar winner and a 30 dollar loser three wins one loss you're not going to go broke like that folks hope i've shared some good information with you i know this was a little longer than usual but i didn't do a video in a while <laughs> i love doing these for you thank you for your time folks remember the more you know the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.